Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here because we're here in Montana and we are about to get started on our very first big project. We are going to be making a Civil War era style cavalry saber. We have so much to do, so much to learn. The workshop isn't ready for it, but we're going to give it a go anyway. And uh, the plan for today is to get set up to essentially make our own steel. That's the plan. So <clears throat> we're gonna make hearth steel, which is very basically taking wrought iron, melting it in a charcoal furnace, and turning it into uh, a usable steel for a sword. So that's a hell of a process. Mm -hmm. That's something we've never done. That sounds pretty daunting. And uh, but you know what? Daunting projects are the funnest projects. The Viking sword, that was a daunting project, and that was a fun project. I'm excited. Whether this works or not, I'm excited. We've got a lot to learn, and on the note of daunting projects, on this cavalry saber, it's not just gonna be a plain old cavalry saber. <laughs> we are gonna deck this thing out with so much fancy smanciness, it's gonna be insane. And that's the little introduction to the transition into talking about some tools that I just bought. I'm gonna interrupt to thank today's sponsor, which is Vikings War of Clans. If you're familiar with the roleplayer games of the 90s, you'll understand why Vikings is so addictive and why there are over 20 million players. It's because when Vikings was made, it took inspiration from those games that you loved. The game is fantastic because it's constantly evolving with never-ending fighting over resources, the forging of alliances, and live events. You can help support my channel by downloading Vikings at the link in the description, at my link in the description, and when you do get Vikings there, you're gonna get 200 gold and protective shield for free. Go check it out, it's available on iOS and Android. Go get this free-to-play mobile game. Vikings is now a long-time sponsor of the show. We're very grateful for their support. So be sure to hit that link, get those 200 gold and protection shield for free. Thank you Vikings for sponsoring the video. We're gonna get right back to where we were. So, in making the Viking sword, I had a flex shaft, and then I found out there are even better tools for carving things with a high speed burr. This is one of them, this is called a micro motor. We do have a flex shaft in here. It's time for us to unbox them, get them set up, and show you what they'll do. Here we go. Pretty funky, right? This is doing 18,000 RPM, and because it's coming off this big motor through this shaft, this is gonna have more torque. This can go up to 40,000 RPM, and since there is no power being taken through the cord um, through a coil, sorry for not making it clearer, there is a spring in here that does all the rotating. This isn't a motor. All this does is get spun from this key on the shaft. If you give that a little spin. Uh oh, so this has more torque, but when you turn it on, you see how this wobbles around? That's because the shaft has some whip to it. It's also not very flexible, you know, so it's a little bit less handy to get into places. Ironically, the flex shaft is less flexy. That was a good one, Will. That was hilarious. Since this is just an electric cord coming to a little micro motor, this one here doesn't have any whip and it is significantly quieter. On the way, I have a tool for doing 320,000 RPM. And why do we want this stuff? We want this stuff for drilling, in the case of this. Great for doing very small little drilling operations and any sort of gemstone setting. We want it for carving and being able to do that with just a little bit more control over here, a little less torque, a little more speed. And then we want the ultra high speed for then doing carving and background removal on any engraving. Because at the higher speeds with a carbide burr, it saves from grabbing as you work and skipping it across the work. So the higher the speed, kind of the better when you have those small tiny burrs for removing any backgrounds and doing any carving. So this is exciting, these are some good tools to have, especially here near the old, uh, near the old microscope. So that's all very exciting. We're gonna get these finished set up and it uh, should be about time to go pick up Colin from the airport. Colin is gonna be helping us with this cavalry saber build. Um, he's a very talented sword maker, knife maker. So it's gonna be exciting. We're gonna be, uh, have more people here in the shop helping us make some things. We're gonna get these set up and then we're gonna go get him. We're starting the process of sketching out the sword some more but we need to go skedaddle on over to the airport, go pick up Colin and uh, then work out a little more of a game plan for the day. So. Let's go pick him up. Here we go. There we go. I think we spot him. How's it going, Colin? How's it going? Good. Okay, welcome how are you? to Montana. So welcome. This is the workshop. So what kind of sword is this then? It's a Latin 
two Celtic sword, British style, um, roughly 200 oh. BC. I saw this one on your Instagram. Oh my goodness. That is, oh, that feels so good. Yeah, that's a uh, bog oak and uh, bronze handle. I Sweet love goodness. this handle. That steel's very nice as well. Yeah, that's wrought iron and uh, just straight laminate, laminated down the core. And then super high layer, like 500 some odd, well not super high layer, but 500 some odd layer mm -hmm. edge bar. First of all, you're gonna need some merch. So uh, I think the Freedom Hype shirt is a pretty good one. Pretty, pretty popular. If you guys want merch, you can go to alexsteelshop.com and get yourself an awesome Freedom Hype shirt just like that. <laughs> Colin, he, he, he gets it for free. Because <laughs> he's a friend. Okay, but we gotta get to work, which means we gotta think about what we need for the half steel. And you're gonna be the one that's kinda like guiding us through here, because we have no idea. We, we discovered what hard steel was about 25 minutes ago. What do we need? Fire bricks, wrought iron or bloomery, blower, and some black iron pipe for the tweer. I think that's everything. Oh, lump charcoal. We got a list of a good number of things that we need. We have to go get them. So what we gotta do is we gotta look for things that are wrought iron, and it's very, it has, it has a very particular characteristic. Oh, that's awesome. You'll often see banding running down it. This thing is cool, it's definitely forged and forge welded, which kind of makes you think that it might well be wrought iron. So we can put that to the side. And then we found some wagon tires over here, which, uh, which should probably be wrought iron too. Just the surface texture, some of the slight banding you can see, it really screams wrought. Are we taking this too, Will? I think we might as well. So I think we're gonna grab this one, and this one, and that bolt. It's time to get fire bricks. Here we go. We got charcoal. So we have this stuff here in the workshop. We got a bunch of bricks. We have a whole load of lumpwood charcoal. We have our wrought iron wagon wheels, we hope. Um, you guys found out that bolt, apparently it's not wrought iron. So that's steel. So now we gotta get to actually building the hearts, then cutting up the wrought iron wagon tires, and getting us ready for actually doing this smelt, would you call it? Uh, hearth, three mil. The plan is to build the hearths on this uh, steel pallet here, just so we can wheel it in and out of the shop, and so we make sure that we keep it up off the ground as much as possible, protect the concrete and asphalt. So right now what we're up to is Colin's figuring out exactly what we need to do, what config, what layout we're gonna do, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and get this thing, the first one, cut up, and then from there we'll start processing in the strips that we're gonna use and melt them. Plasma cutting up pieces, about another 10 pounds worth of pieces. We're gonna get started lighting the hearts. Okay, we have Heart 1 running. We're about to take the coals from here. We're gonna put them into Heart number 2. The little shop vac over there is doing a phenomenal job of powering these furnaces. And we're soon gonna be ready to put some wrought iron in. What is super exciting about this is this is, this is very similar to how we all started blacksmithing. You know, you start off with a very simple, humble setup. Not too dissimilar to this. This is obviously for making steel. But it's not a whole lot different. It's hey, actually almost exactly how my forge was set up when I just started out. The concept is exactly the same for a blacksmithing forge. All you need is a way to contain the heat, something to blow air into the fire. And then some fuel, and you're gonna have yourself a fire that you can forge out of. If you are gonna make a forge or a furnace with charcoal, Make sure it's the lump charcoal, the lump wood charcoal. You definitely don't want to end up getting the charcoal briquettes because they're uh, they're way less good. This is how steel and iron has been made. Well, it's a similar way that steel and iron has been made for thousands of years. They just had less nice uh, shop vacs. Wait, shop vacs were worse quality then? I believe it or not, yes.
So we're getting ready to charge our first wrought iron into the hearth. First we're going to do six ounces and we're going to repeat that six times and we're going to have about two pounds total. So we are six times going to take six ounces of wrought iron, stick it in the fire, let it melt down, let it accumulate the carbon. Yeah, and it's going to form a spongy mass of extremely high carbon steel, almost cast iron maybe, uh, about 1.5% to 2% carbon in the steel as opposed to the like 0.1, 0.2% in the wrought iron we have right now. This is amazing. So we're ready to go with the first charge. For each furnace and in they go. They're both in there. The raw iron is in the fire. I'm excited. This is uh, this is gonna be pretty mind blowing if this works. Making steel from iron. I mean, this is this is a big part of how we have all the amazing technology we have today in the world. Is people in a very primitive fashion taking iron, making it into steel, and then being able to build incredible things from it. We've done five charges of our seven, right? Six. Six. Five out of the six. final charge in, which means after we put these pieces in and they melt down to the bottom, I guess we're gonna, we're gonna let it burn down for a minute and then we're gonna go rummaging around in the bottom and try and find a balloon. We're gonna go fishing for steel in this thing. Hopefully it's in one piece. We'll see. No way. No. No. That oh my is, goodness. That's steel. What? Gentle, gentle, gentle. No freaking. That is unbelievable. Okay, so now what we're doing, if I'm not wrong, is we are consolidating this bloom. That's right. Gently hammering it to get this put together a little bit. Ideally, you do this on a wooden stump, right? Yep. We're just being extra gentle right now because we're on a real anvil. This is unbelievable. Okay, we're gonna put it to the side and we're now gonna pull out the second dips on wax. There it is. Oh my goodness. That has probably about 1.5 to 2% carbon. It's gonna decarb some more in the forging process to get us down to a more usable like 0 0.7, 0 0.8. That is unbelievable. So it was wrought iron, but now it's carbonified. It's been steelized. I thought carbonified was funny. They were both really good. <laughs> steelified? Was it good? You reckon steelified was good? Steelized. Steelized? Stolen. We stole on this. Oh, it's, it's been, been steeled. This thing it's been has been stolen. No. Is that good? No. Is that a good joke? Don't you put that wasted thing up. No, 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 J don't do that. This was a good joke. Hey! I think it was a good joke. Okay, we're just gonna get the fire ready for the next round. Will's gonna put the tuer, tuer, tuer iron? Tuer. Tuer. Will's got the tuer back in place. It's time to fire up the blower, get the fire going, and do another six pieces. So we've pulled out the tour. We are on melt number four. This is our seventh piece. We decided to not do another one in that left hand half. It got filled up with ash and it just wasn't a fire ready to be used. Now this bloom, we're gonna try forging it and consolidating it on the power hammer. First steel to go on the power hammer is gonna be steel that we made ourselves for Montana Wagon Tire. Here we go, as gently as I can. To be a test of the... Gently as I can. Oh, this is fun. Christening the power hammer with real Montana steel. 
in the truest sense of the word. Yeah, I think that's about it. We consolidated that piece down. Tomorrow we have a lot of processing to do. The real test as to whether we've made steel from these Montana wagon tires, these Montana wrought iron wagon tires is in the sparking. We're gonna take a piece of wrought iron from the same tire. Will has it right there. So this is the exact material that we were feeding into the furnace. This here, hearth steel, is the hearth steel. The proof of whether it's steel is in the sparks because up to a certain point, the amount of sparks in steel correlates pretty well with the carbon content. So iron is not gonna spark a whole lot. Mild steel doesn't spark a whole lot. High carbon steel, the sparks explode out much more towards the end. Cast iron, it doesn't spark so much. But high carbon steel, lots of sparks. This is what wrought iron looks like at the belt grinder. The sparks are very long, not a lot of explosions at the end. Here is the half steel. Look at that! Unbelievable! Just how much that spark. The difference between wrought iron and steel from wrought iron is phenomenal. The sparks explode so much more. We've made steel. This is material that we can definitely make a sword out of. This is a lot of material to work with what we need to do tomorrow. In part one of building a cavalry saber, make sure you subscribe so that you can watch it. We're gonna take this material, we're gonna process it down, work it, fold it, work it, fold it, work it, fold it, just like it has been done for a very long time and eventually make this into steel that is suitable for this sword. It's gonna be extremely exciting. So make sure you stay tuned. Also make sure that you hit the link in the description below and go get Vikings. Thank you Vikings for sponsoring this episode. It's been a pleasure as always bringing you along and make sure you subscribe because this is gonna be an unbelievable project. Thank you as ever, bye bye.